Okay, Gary playing the anti-Sicilians again, and this time we're going to take a look at his game from his game against, well, the world, uh, in 1999, the high-profile match. Very famous um, game. And uh, he played the Mosca variation, which I think is a, is a wise idea, because he just decided very dedicated not to take on the combined computer power uh, and uh, opening books of all the people in the world. Who... Even back in 1999. Yeah, exactly. Uh, everyone who had chess. Yes. And the world decided to play Bishop D7, and Gary headed straight for the Morosity bind position that we saw here. But the world came up with a um, very interesting idea here to try and challenge us. Now, after we saw these moves in the previous game, Cars uh, Explorer didn't. D4. Said to take, so we saw this before. Threat takes bishop g7, threatening the knight, knight e2. And then the world played anything queen of queen to e6. So, what is the idea behind uh, that move? Well, I suppose sort of instantly taking both the pawns. Yeah. Uh, um... So, the bind will come the Marotti sooner if we take it. <laughs> yeah, I just made that up. <laughs> but um, well, how do we save both pawns? Can, can we save both pawns? Uh, well, something? I suppose that the white queen has come into action and, and saved both pawns. Yeah, we can leave knight in the c pawn. Mm -hmm. So do that. <laughs> Stupid. Well, you're, you're looking for solutions. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there is one. Okay. But Gary played knight 5, uh, which. What's in that? Very defense powerful. Yep. Four column e7. Good, yep. So if we're now for rook c8, then I think after protecting the e pawn, mm. black strategy of queen e6 hasn't really helped. I mean, we've got that move coming to back. So it might have to play something more uh, consistent with the idea. So black took on e4. So here we see a very sharp. The world was going for it, even against America. Exactly. So they're allowed to go. Devon, of course, to keep the rook on the uh, on the knight on the knight the rook. By rooks, yeah. Well, because we're going to take that, so the rook is now on the knight, and uh, the the knight thing is just so. You think, well, I'm going to find that my sweet. The queen takes c4. The black only has two pawns for a rook, but he's about to take the knight. So, um, interesting idea. Well, yeah, but again, sort of. It, under um, if any of the players from the world team played that, if they were by themselves, do you know what I mean? I uh, well, you say that, but um... well, it, it seems he. I mean, you know, you've given up the right castle. You've uh, you're playing quite sharply against Gary Kasparov, and I think most people would try against being, you know, sharp tactical <laughs> variations against Kasparov. Were they the only person playing against him? I think there's when there's a few of you, you sort of um, sponsor. Still shared between all of you. Well, this variation has actually been um, said in uh, by Shiran himself as black. Yeah. I think it was last year in 2013. He played a, mat a game in the Gunka German tournament, and he beat. Um, I think it was Arkady Nidish, the German number one. Mm. So he beat him blind. Um, the king is quite safe here on D7 because white doesn't have an open file, and the knight's going to be. A Gary played knight B6. Back. Not, not purely to cross his finger and hope that Black was going to miss that, because of course he did. The, the world did miss that. Yeah. Um, you, you'd think someone in the world would see A to B six. So. You thought, well, I'm going to the knight, so I could at least create that dub, double, uh, sorry, yeah, double pawn yeah. weakness. That's right. so. If, if I'm going to lose the knight at some point, I may as well have some advantage. Um, so now we see uh, White not have the one position, but then again, he's one. And black sends the black side, not anything down on the day. So, this way for black to play the queen e6 sort of move that you might think. Uh, I've never showed us that on the note. And on I just absolutely pawn. Well, no, because you've got, you've got some ideas. So, there's the point of us showing these um, variations to, to demonstrate the um, sort of interesting. Is both sides have. Um, let's see actually happens because I'm sure most people would agree with you, Nick, that you wouldn't play this as black 
especially against someone like Harry. Mm. Would you play this black anyway? Is it a bit looking in the board? Yeah, I mean, I would think, even though I can sort of appreciate saying you're actually not in any serious danger here, I think I would be uncomfortable playing black in this position. Okay, let's see how black can try to, to do something. So rook a8, and Gary went a4. I think because he's trying to stop black push the b-pawn. Just to show you what I mean, for example, white played rook e1, black can try and make use of these mm. um, these pawns, and if the pawn was to come to b4, the knight would have to move, and then black's bishop would be quite interested along this diagonal. Is a3 not a possibility? No, uh, no, no, no I mean, can go there anyway. Oh, of course, yeah, but I'm thinking first, rather than a4. Or is that still going to be... Yeah, this still got the same problem. Well, after b5, what do you do? You have to... Yeah, you've still got the same... Maybe something like rook b1, but then I go there anyway. Then I just take... I don't think black black got rid of the, the double pawn. Mm. So now I only have... Well, I have no weaknesses now. So maybe it's okay for black. Pass d pawn. Mm. So I don't think it's that bad. So a4 was, was quite a good idea by Gary. Not the first time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> Knight e4. <clears throat> Black trying to swap off. Um, and Gary took it. Well, we could have got knight d5 here to threaten a cheeky, cheeky mm. check. What can Black do against that? Um. It's quite, I have to say, it's quite an interesting move, actually. Um, I think uh, I think Black's got to be quite careful because if you play Rook A6, yeah. Well, I don't. It doesn't look that good, does it? I think maybe White could play B3 here. Yeah. You also, you've got the problem with um, obviously at some point Bishop E3 can come and double. Yes, that, that was the other issue. Bishop E3 could be quite good here. So that's why I, I probably after um, Knight D5 want to play the move Bishop D4. Okay. Yeah. Where now Black. Okay, you're attacking, I'm threatening the knight. Uh, um, the knight would have to move back. Yeah. But um, black has now got great central control, so yeah. it's not that bad, is it? I mean, no. for example, here, double attack, f5, the knight's coming in. So your original fears um, maybe are a lady. I don't know, I think that white. It's got to be careful. Just because yeah. a rook is better than the knight, black does have two pawns. So, and it's but it's that kind of thing of in my, in my initial reaction of the the king being in the centre, uncastled and not able to castle. You think, oh, that's that's bad. Mm. But actually, there's no brilliant way to take advantage because yeah. you haven't got the light squared bishop, so you've you can't really you've not got a lot down that diagonal and um, safety. Yeah, it, yep. it, there's not a lot black, uh, white can do to take advantage. Um, in fact, the game went on. Gary had a lot of trouble trying to win this game, as he acted against the whole world. <laughs> Queen b3. I think um, this is like winning idea, isn't it? Because it wins pawn. But after black save f pawn, probably it was the best one to save, wasn't it? Than, yeah. than the weak pawn. Gary didn't take the pawn on b6. So why do you think he didn't want to do that? Um... I think he was worried about it. There's no win, I'm just black's got a uh, annoying. Something like Bishop D4 again? Oh, and FDA, yeah, yeah, okay, sorry, yeah, yeah, the pawn's coming off. Can we do anything about that? Move our knights or something? The knight's got to go somewhere effective. Yep. D5? Yeah. Um, maybe even this one as well. Knight C2, Knight 2 um, I think I don't think Gary would like this. For example, let's go Bishop E3 after Rook A6. In fact, it looks as though White is losing because I only squared Queen B4. But can you see tactic? Yeah, you could um, move something like E2 and have a discuss tactic. Oh, good. Well done. And even if after Rook A6, White plays Bishop takes D. Fortress Christ. Um, black can obviously take queen and get a couple of pawns. I mean, white's got two rooks for the queen, but black has great control. Yeah. Or black can play even more aggressively with bishop to take d4. Queen b3, rook b6, and the middle on b2. I don't know, I'm just sort of playing yeah. around here. But um, 
it's okay, it's okay for, a, for a black. So, in game, um, after f5, he played bishop g5, and the game went on, and yeah, he eventually won, but it was a really tough game. So, the point basically Nick, is if uh, play a, uh, anti Sicilian and they play a move like Queen e xsb so don't, don't be put out saying, mm -hmm. okay, what's the good and bad things, the pros and cons of this move? Well, it moves the Queen, and we haven't cardled, so White had this side 95. But um, very interesting idea. So, yeah, yeah maybe if you're looking at an, a line of the, uh, black against this line, e that could be a, a surprise weapon to try to get yourself out of the e structure.